everyone, it's Alex, and today I'm here to do the bar in the bookcase tag. This tag was created by Booktube's very own Jalen at the bar in the bookcase, and Jalen is a channel I really love, and just as a person, Jalen is so great. So I'm really glad he tagged me, and I really love his prompts too. All of these prompts have something to do with a type of drink, and with my knowledge of alcohol, I've heard of it before. But I am not very well versed in drinks, like at all. Like, if I go with my friends to a restaurant or a bar or whatever, and like if I have a drink menu, I'll pretend to look at it, but then whenever the waiter or waitress comes over, I'll just look at whatever my friend got and I'll say, hmm, I'll have what they're having. I don't think I've literally even heard of what some of the names of these drinks are, so um, yeah, this should be fun. Up first is an Old Fashioned, which I have heard of before, a historical fiction recommendation. I have a couple here, and the first one I want to mention is Days Without End by Sebastian Barry. It's been a while since I've read this one, but I believe it at least takes place somewhere in the mid-1800s during the American Indian Wars. It's about a man named Thomas, and also another man named John Cole, or maybe just Cole. But it's about their adventure together, and how they grow together, and I do remember, I really like this book, and I remember it has one of the best first chapters I've ever read in any book. And the second one I want to mention is The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien, which is about the Vietnam War, and a book I really like about the blurring between fiction and reality. This book actually reads kind of like short stories in a way, but I just really liked how it manages to have these vignettes of such perfectly described situations in which maybe these vignettes of description are sort of these consequences of maybe something like PTSD. Up next is Sidecar, a book with a strong supporting character. This might be a weird answer, but I really liked If I Were to Imagine in The Hours by Michael Cunningham. Technically, this whole book is a side character to Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. The book is an inspired retelling or expansion of Mrs. Dalloway by having three characters. There are these three women, and one of them is actually Mrs. Dalloway herself. The other character is Virginia Woolf writing Mrs. Dalloway, and then the third character is Mrs. Brown, who's reading Mrs. Dalloway in her real life, but it's like all fiction. It's a really wonderful book, and so like generous to the source material and I read it right after reading Mrs. Dalloway and it really was a wonderful effect on me and it's also a great movie which always makes me cry but um yeah I really like that book and I think if you read Wolf like not even just Mrs. Dalloway but Wolf in general I think you would really like it too. Up next is a Manhattan, a book set in New York. I have a couple of books here, and the first one is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. When I think about it, I really don't know a lot of books set in New York, but I always think of this one at least. I think it really uses New York as a perfect backdrop without feeling like it's using setting as a convenience. And the other book I wanted to mention is nonfiction, and that's The Lonely City by Olivia Lang, where it's her description of I think it's when she moves to New York City and she's talking about navigating loneliness, not only her own, but also these iconic figures across like the New York art scene. So I found that really fascinating and is a book I really love. The next prompt is Bloody Mary, a book that scared you slash messed you up. I'm actually going to go with The Pisces by Melissa Broder because when I finished this it gave me so much anxiety. I was just really surprised how well done Broder was at this really funny concept um, given what you'll find out about it when you read it. But I do think it was this bigger picture at what it means to try to always indulge in our imaginary spaces of intimacy and connection uh, pulled off with some bastardizing content, I would say. Up next is Espresso Martini, a book that kept you reading into the night. For this one, I'm gonna say Luster by Raven Leilani, which really kept me up, not even from like a sense of storytelling or like being all of like not being entirely gripping. But I think Raven Leilani really shows like the proof in sort of the mindset of a 20 something or really any like young adult in the 2010s, 2020s, because I think her vibe of her book Luster is what so many people are trying to pull off. Like I feel like what people say about Sally Rooney is what Lester is doing like perfectly in its own way. And also just as a form of study, like with the writing, I think it's amazing how Leilani is able to write this very vulnerable prose, but without it feeling confessional or like a mood dump or emotion dump, or if that's our 
I don't even know if those are even phrases. So yeah, I really love Lester, and I've been rereading it recently, actually, and I just love also watching Raven Leilani interviews, and she's so smart and wonderful, and that's why Lester was my favorite book last year. Up next is Sazerac? Sazeric? <laughs> this is like me ordering from a menu. A book that left you disoriented. This one might be a weird choice, but I'm gonna say Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Chanel Miller was famously known for her impact statement that went viral based on her release of what happened to her and her sexual assault through this anonymous name of Jane Doe. And the whole book of Know My Name is about Miller recounting this sexual assault, but also the justice system and how it plays into reliving her traumas based on what happened by having to explain it so formally through the legal system. But what I also really loved and appreciated in the memoir is how Miller described this sense of disassociation between her anonymity of being Jane Doe and then seemingly overnight being this beacon of like a sensation of speaking for so many people with similar experiences. The reason I would say it disoriented me isn't because of anything like with Miller's way of communicating that information, but it left me very like disoriented or nauseous based on just how cruel the justice system is of really trying to advocate for things like justice. One of my favorite memoirs I've ever read and I, I like I, it's a book I really do recommend to everybody and which is a rare thing for me to do. Up next is Long Island Iced Tea, a book that is doing too much bonus points if it works anyway. I would say overall it works and I would also like say for this The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. This is a book about a boy named Theo who lives through like this horrible incident whenever he's younger and basically this painting called The Goldfinch haunts his whole life and what really goes off the rails for me on doing too much is that I think Donna Tartt really doesn't know how to like advocate for plot or know what to do with it whenever she might feel overwhelmed by it. Considering that Tarte supposedly writes like one novel every 10 years, it really felt like the plotty elements towards the later half felt like maybe it was written in the last couple of years of the 10 year span and everything before it was maybe written within like maybe the first four years or whatever. But I think overall the sentiments of The Goldfinch are really well done and I liked it overall but the plotty stuff really brought it down for me. I would also say The Days of Abandonment by Elena Ferrante and I'm a Ferrante fan but with this book it is so visceral with sex. There are literally parts in it where like it feels like illegal for me to read. Ferrante always loves to push that sense of like you know, uh, sensuality, but it's never like in a way of her being vulgar or like offensive. It really does become like fitting to the characters that she already presents to us. I will say it's a bit more like, you know, toned down in the Neapolitan novels, which was my first introduction to Fronte. I was surprised with these more mature, like in terms of age, characters that feel so liberated describing sex this way, which is completely fine, but I was just so surprised. Up next is Negroni, uh, one of the few drinks I've heard on this list, a book with a love triangle. I would say Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan, and it has a love triangle that I think is so refreshing being a recent release in terms of depicting a love triangle as something so transparent and without like any sense of shame that these are clearly all adults that are like, having consent to participate in something like this. But the clear winner of, well, practically the invention of the love triangle, I would say. Love triangles didn't exist before the Neapolitan novels by Elena Ferrante. Up next is Bay Breeze, a book with a light, chill, heartwarming vibes. I would immediately say anything by Hiromi Kawakami with the Nakano Thrift Shop and Strange Weather in Tokyo are two books that I've read by her. Kawakami is just really campy and like chill and relaxed and her stories are really fun. So they always feel very comforting to return to. So they make really great like uh, trip reads or like vacation reads to me. I would also put Miranda July in there. Miranda July, I think as a, like a writer, doesn't really work for me. I much prefer her like uh, visual mediums, like her movies, but her short story collection, No One Belongs Here More Than You, and her novel, First Bad Man, I think they're doing interesting stuff and they're very like July-esque. At least I feel like she has a stamp to her style or her vibe. Up next is Dark and Stormy, a book that's dark, thrilling, and menacing. Bonus point if the setting matches. It would be a crime not to mention The Butcher's Hook by Janet Ellis. This would actually work for the historical fiction one too, but it's set in the 1700s and it's about this girl named Anne and she's being 
poorly mistreated by men. And because of this, she really takes control into doing some very... She, like, gets a hobby, I'll say. Anne is such a fun character to read, and there's some menacing vibes in that book. And the book is also just really funny and devilish and witty and clever, and I really loved it. I also want to give a shout out to Unseen World by Liz Moore. I think this book begins with Ada, who's our narrator. I think she begins like as a young child as she's describing her father losing his memory, and it becomes this, to me, it was an unexpected thriller and trying to solve maybe what her father's research was about and how that's in relationship to his memory loss. It's been a really long time since I've read The Unseen World, but I remember it being a page turner and I really loved it. And finally, we have Martini, which is a classic recommendation. And I'll go ahead and just tell you all what you can read for any classic introduction, and that's Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Classics weren't invented until Jane Austen. Austen's dialogue is always so clever, and her books are full of rereading potential. Her characters are always fully realized, and her sense of description with setting is perfect. And she basically invented the F-boy. So that does it for this tag. And the questions were a lot of fun, so I'd love to see more people do this. This is also a perfect time because with tag videos, I love shouting out smaller channels that I've been really loving recently. I can't remember who Jalen tagged, but I figured he probably already tagged like people I'd expect that I would also tag like CJ, Hannah, Grace, and Kiernan. Oh, and I actually, right before filming this, I saw that Iggy at Literary Iggy posted her version of this, but I still want to mention her because I've really been loving Iggy's channel and she's living all of our dreams. She is currently a bookseller and she has a really cute vlog recently where she showed her bookish life in the bookstore. So I really love Iggy's channel, so go check it out. I also want to tag Ben at Ben Green. I think Ben's been a YouTuber for a long while, but he's only just now dipping into booktube. And it's fun to watch him sort of explore and discover how nice and lovely booktube is, and it matches how nice and lovely Ben is. Of course, I have to mention my fellow Ferrante fan, and that is Rebecca at Rebecca Eats Books. Rebecca also loves Ali Smith and Marilyn Robinson, so she's someone after my own heart. I also want to tag Steph at Perks of Steph. Steph and I have very similar reading tastes, and so she reads a lot of books that I imagine I might like, so it's great to get Steph's perspective before I commit or decide on certain books I've always thought about. And so with this tag, yeah, I would really love to know what Steph thinks. I'd also love to tag Dee at Heroine's Corner. Dee has really great reading choices that are really diverse, and particularly she had a recent video about black British books that were coming out recently. I'm really excited to see what more videos that Dee makes, so yeah, I'd love to see her version of this tag. I also want to tag Sina at Beating Around the Books, and Sina is very recent to me, but her discussions, like very casual, chatty discussions of books, is always really inviting, and it might be weird to say, but I just like the cadence of her voice too. But with Sina's videos so far, it really, like after I watch them, it just makes me want to pick up a book and read. I also have Jordan at Jordan Parsons, and Jordan is a tag aficionado. But there is one video I really like by him about the objectivity in art, and I found it really interesting. So I'd love to see more videos like that, but before I see more videos like that, I'd love to see him do this video with this tag. Also want to tag Shay at Hey It's Shay. And Shay is so personable and her sense of presentation in her videos is like top notch. So I think she would have really interesting answers for this tag in particular. And finally, I have Nicole at Books From Bed. And I've really been loving Nicole's like her sharing especially her like writing vlogs with us as me dipping my toes into writing some stuff. Nicole's energy is just really contagious and she's really lovely as a person and I really love watching her videos. So yeah, that does it for this tag and also for me practically making a whole other video on that list of people I tagged for this. Thanks again Jalen for tagging me and as always thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.